peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Just wanted to get out this quick emergency prayer request. Like I said in, in some of the other videos, I'm not oblivious to what's going on in the world. And I got a prayer request from a sister in Christ uh, over in England. And she gave me an email said, Hello Philip, praying that you are well. Please can I ask for, for prayer. This week in England, there has been a lot of riots and protests. Where I live feels very unsafe now. I'm trying to stay off the news to stay away from fear, but as I do live on the edge of the Muslim area, I'm a bit nervous, as things can change very quickly. Please pray that I can stay strong in this evil day and for protection for my family too. God bless the sister in Christ. Okay? If you don't know, I've been watching the news and there's a lot of riots going on all over the world, all over Europe. Go sit. Go sit. <laughs> when he walks around, Declan walks around, he'll make, make noise and make this bump. And I need to make sure I don't move too. But there's riots going on in England. There's riots going on here in America. And the whole world is just one big powder keg. And I think, I believe that we're getting ready to be caught up any time now. Any time now. Okay. So I want to put this out there as a prayer request. And I would like to go over some scriptures to encourage the sister in Christ and anyone out there that seems like they're in volatile situations. My first advice is that if you live in a town that's about ready to explode, a city that's about ready to explode, uh, it's time to head out to the countryside. It really is. Okay, if you can get your family to safety, get your family to safety. If God has you where you're at and there's no moving, then God has you where you're at. So I want to give some encouragement to the brethren. We start with 2 Titus 4, 2, King James Bibles. Remember, it's a King James Bible-believing ministry. Bible-believing, God-fearing ministry. Okay. 2 Titus 4, 2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. Out of season. We've never been more out of season than now. Okay, I know in the past they were killing Christians in the past. Some Christians are still getting killed today. But the truth today has been made so obsolete. Not, I'm not saying they, they've done away with the truth. The truth is right here. I have it. But I mean, the world, the way it treats truth, it's so obsolete. They want nothing to do with truth. The world is just devouring one another and everything. The lowercase g God of this world, you remember who he is? Satan. He's really, he's really bringing in that prosperity and that, you know, that heaven on earth, isn't he? Isn't he? Uh, no, he's just causing so much destruction. The world's falling apart. Remember, out of season. I know that Second Titus 4.2 is for preachers. But for instruction righteousness, even for the sisters in Christ, remember that this is the solution. When the world's falling apart, get back to living for the Lord. Get back to hiding God's word in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. All right? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. All right? Get back into God's word. Get back into prayer. Pray without ceasing, the Bible talks about. 
let your request be made known to God, which is this whole point. Okay? It's a prayer request to pray for the brethren out there that are in places that are becoming dangerous. Okay? Hebrews 13.5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. And here's the point I'm trying to make. For he that saith, I will never leave thee, for he saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God knows what you're going through, brother, sister of Christ, especially this sister in Christ. God knows what you're going through. God has a plan. Second, remember, all things work together. We're going to do a big study on that. All things work together to them that love God. Love God. If you love, Jesus said, if, you, if a man love me, he will keep my words. If you love me, keep my commandments. Love God. You're taking God's word. You're heightening your heart. You stand for truth with the life that you're living. To them that are called according to his purpose. Are you saved, born again? The sister in Christ is saved and born again. She loves the word of God. Higher. All things work together for good. Trust the Lord. He knows what he's doing. Okay. He'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. First, uh, 2 Timothy 4.16 says, At my first answer, no, this is Paul, At first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray to God that it may not be laid to their charge. Brothers, I'm going to keep reading this. The reason I'm reading this is because we're so spread out, sometimes we feel like we're alone. I did that study about is Elijah. I only, Lord, I only am left. Why? Because that's how we feel. And God has to correct us and say, uh, no, I have, I can't remember if it's 10,000 or 15,000 men that, you know, this huge group of men that haven't bowed, priests that haven't bowed the knee to Baal, okay? And Paul says that you're not alone. The sufferings that you're going through are even in the brethren in the world. Okay. He says, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that may, may not be laid to their charge. Remember Paul, when he first got saved, before he got saved, he was killing Christians. He was hunting them down, throwing them into prison. So when he got saved, it was hard for people to, people, people to believe that he got saved. And that's why all men forsook him. And he said, I laid not to their charge. Why? Because I'd have done the same thing. That man that said that was killing Christians and now says he's saved, he needs to prove himself. He needs to prove himself. Verse 17 is what we're after, though. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. We're to be a living witness and a verbal witness. But the thing is, for that sister in Christ and for all the brethren that seem to be in tough areas and things seem to be falling apart around the world and you're starting to get fearful of what's going on in the world, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. What's that strengthening? That we live a life of Christ, that we're a living witness and a verbal witness. If you haven't watched the videos, go watch the videos about prove yourselves the whole armor of God. Put on the armor of light. Be a living witness and a verbal witness. But the most important thing that I can encourage you with, brother, says Christ, is Jesus, when you're saved and born again, the hidden man of the heart, it's talking about sisters in Christ, the hidden man of the heart, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. We all have the Holy Spirit in us. God has not left us. He hasn't forsaken us. He hasn't forgotten us. God has a plan. Psalms 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. We're going to get back to trust, because some of the brethren might know what verse I'm going to go to with trust, but we've been going through some series of studies, but I'm going to save that for last. But we'll trust my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Verse 3, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. We're praying for the brethren out there in harm's way. Praying for this sister in Christ that's in harm's way. Brothers and sisters Christ, they need prayer. We all need prayer. We need to be praying for one another. And we also need to be praying to God first and foremost. Take it to God in prayer. And I know the sister in Christ has. But you take it to God in prayer and say, Lord, help me. Save me. If I'm, I, there, You know, I have times that I've screwed up and I've hit rock bottom. I've hit some tough situations where... I didn't do anything wrong. There's times where I screwed up and fell and fell down. And I've had to call out and say, Lord, save me. Protect me. Help me. Like this sister's asking. I don't want to be afraid. I want to fear you first and foremost. I don't want to be afraid of this world. But it's starting to get distracting out there. Especially when brethren, they're supposed to be in ministry. They're supposed to be exhorting the brethren and correcting the brethren and preaching the word 
and exhorting the brethren to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ, and they're getting distracted by the world. And they're starting to fear monger. It's hard. We need to trust the Lord. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. That sound mind is this. Is this in your head and this is in your heart? A sound mind. We're not losing it and getting all going crazy because of what's going on in the world. We're not turning on this because of what's going on in the world. A sound mind. Go ahead. Eight. Be not there, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. If you're living a life of Christ, you're, you're, remember what we talked about? Wisdom. Being in Christ Jesus made us unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. That sanctification and putting on Jesus Christ, that whole armor of God, putting on Jesus Christ, you're putting on the armor of light. His righteousness, that breastplate of righteousness, being an ambassador for Jesus Christ, being separate from this world. It's not easy in these last days. It is not easy. That's why he talks about the afflictions of the gospel. If you're living the gospel, not just preaching it, not just you know witnessing, verbally witnessing, but if you're being a living witness, a light to this dark world, then you're separate from it. And like I said before, they're either going to want what you have, or they're going to hate what you have. And want nothing to do with what you have. Okay. But be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works. I'm talking about salvation, not according to our work. Good works come after salvation. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It's talking about salvation. But remember, his purpose. God has everything under control. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Meekness and fear. Remember, in meekness, instructing those that oppose himself, if peradventure they would recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him, captive by him at his will. In meekness, okay? Ready to give a hope. When, bad, when things fall apart, just as some advice to the sister in Christ and all the brethren, when things around you start falling apart, it's not time to turn from this and becoming a talk show, like the, a lot of these YouTube channels, becoming a talk show about the world, the world, and I feel this and I think this. No, it's time to double down on the gospel. I shouldn't say double down. I think that's a term for gambling. We're spo So forgive me, brothers and sisters. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to turn back to this. No matter how hard it gets, how bad this world's getting, there's always wars and rumors of wars. There's always economic collapses and economic rises. There's always the world just devouring one another. Now, do we see a lot of the time of Jacob's trouble coming together where we can say, ooh, this might be it, this might... Be careful not to get too distracted by this world. Okay. We turn back to this. We turn back to hiding this in your heart more, get back into more reading, get back into more praying, get back into more Bible studies, get back into more fellowship with the brethren. Don't let this world get you off track in what's going on. Why are we still down here? To be a living witness and a verbal witness. And that living witness is going to be, we're going to be re rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. We're looking for that blessed hope and we're living for that just the judgment seat of Christ. Right. For reason of the hope that's in you. When things, I'll say it again, because I might have gotten off track. When things fall apart around us, that's when people are more susceptible to the gospel with the life that you're living and verbally. When everything seems to be going great, it's hard to reach people. When everything starts falling apart and we're not supposed to be get scared because we're not given a spirit of fear, but the world gets scared. They're getting scared. They're thinking it's the end. What am I supposed to do? But doors start opening to witness. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 says, Therefore we are always confident, always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. 
for we walk by faith not for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident i say and willing rather to be absent from the body and present with the lord that blessed hope again we know where we're going when we die we know if something happens to us and god allows it to happen it's for his glory and if it's time to come home it's time to come home Wherefore, we labor that whether we be present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone that may receive the things done in his body, according to what he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We live for the blessed hope, the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ, by being a living witness. Taking God's word, hiding in our heart, and living it, and putting on that whole armor of light and shining. Don't let the world, the world forget, get you to forget that by getting you getting fearful. And then you start falling into the trap of, I've got to survive with my own strength down here. And you start straying from what God called you to, how God called you to live and what he called you to do. Mm -hmm. Living witness and verbal witness, putting on the whole armor of God. Romans 8, 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed into us, in us. Shall be revealed in us. That blessed hope. 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God? The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. But when does that really happen? At the catching away of the body of Christ. Remember this corruption must put on incorruption? And this mortal must put on immortality. We get fully redeemed. Right now our soul and our spirit are the only two things redeemed. This wicked body of flesh isn't redeemed. But someday it will be. What day is that? Titus 2.12. Titus 2.12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I read verse 12 because what does it mean to look for that blessed hope? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldliness, we sh worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. A living witness. You're living a life of Christ as you looking for that blessed hope every day. Every day you say, okay, is today the last day? I've always said this. If Jesus came back tomorrow, what do you need to get done for him today? If Jesus came back today, are you ready? You have brethren that have turned their back on that. They're no longer looking present tense for the blessed hope. They've put off the catching away, the day of Christ, the day of redemption. They've put it off. Why? So they don't have to look for it with the life they're living. And they've become very worldly, those brethren that have done that. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself a peculiar people. Now are we the sons of God. Zealous of good works, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man deceive you. Speak, which I'm doing right now. Exhort, reminding the brethren, we're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Don't let this world distract you. Don't let this world distract you. Don't let this world get you off fearful. Don't let this world get you off track. God will deal with the world. Trust the Lord. Okay. God will deal with the world. These things speak, exhort, rebuke when brethren turn their back on looking present tense for that blessed hope and you can see it with the life they're living. That's when it's time to rebuke. With all authority. This is our authority. Let no man despise thee. Now, I forgot to bring out the hymn, but I was going to sing a little hymn to try to encourage the sister in Christ to strengthen her and the brethren that are going through these hard times with what's going on in the world. But if you can, look up that old hymn that says, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. You know, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth shall grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, He promised. Believe Him and all will be well. 
Then go to a world that is dying. Perfect salvation to tell. And turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Brother says Christ, when it, please look up the hymn. There's a lot more to that hymn. But when the world starts getting really bad and you start feeling yourself being pulled towards the world, get back in the word of God. Get back into prayer. Get back in the word of God. Get back into singing some hymns. Get back into fellowship with brethren. Fellowship where you get to talk about the word with brethren and exhort each other and encourage each other. And you're there to help one another out when they need help. Okay. So finally, brethren, I'm going to end this with this. Proverbs 3, 5. Proverbs 3, 5. Remember we talked about trust. And we're going to get back to it. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. With all thine heart and lean not on your own understanding. The world is trying to distract us, so we start getting into our own understanding. And we start getting fear-mongering and thinking, well, we've got to prep hardcore, and we've got to, i got to do this to save myself, and i got to compromise here, and I've got to conform here. Remember, be not conformed to this world. That's part of coming out from the world and being a light to this dark world. And the world's either going to love it or want what you have, or they're going to hate what you have and hate you for what you have. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. You know the brethren that are really getting bent out of shape the most about what's going on in the world? The ones that think that something down here is more important than this right here. That things of this world are more important than the brethren. They're more important than the ministry for some of the men in ministry. It's more important. Love not the world, neither the things, the things of the world. That includes people. That includes land. That includes Victor Declan here. I almost said Victoria, my old dog. Declan. It includes his home, the chickens, the gardens. Not a thing down here is more important than this. Being a living witness and a verbal witness. Putting on the whole armor of God. Hiding God's word in my heart and living it. Nothing down here is more important than the ministry. God's called me into ministry. Nothing down here is more important. Than no holidays more important. No video games, Hollywood movies, alcohol, drunkenness, drugs, feminism. Nothing down here is more important than the, than the ministry. Than my walk with the Lord, than the ministry, than my fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Than my brethren, than loving my brothers and sisters in Christ. Nothing down here is more important. I see brethren that they start collecting things down here and they start loving things down here more than they love the Lord. And when they see the world starting to fall apart, they get fearful. I'm going to lose what I have. I'm going to lose my way of living, how I love to live, like the cost of living, and this and that. And they start turning their back on this. Love not the world, neither things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Ye adulteresses and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enemy with God? Whosoever therefore shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And it goes back to what I said. You're putting on the whole armor of light and it shines to the world. They'll either look at you and say, I want what you have, or they'll hate you and they're, gonna, they're the enemy. Until they get saved and born again, they're the enemy. Love not the world. Now, I'm not their enemy. They're our enemy. Remember, I, we're supposed to be friendly in the sense of we're, we're, we're feet, our feet are shod with the preparation of peace. If it be possible, live peacefully among all men. We're supposed to be gentle unto all men. And meekness instructing those. I go, hey friend, let me tell you about sin and the cost of sin, which is hell. Listen, friend, let me tell you about the gospel, repentance towards God, and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Now there's more detail to that, but I'm just summing it up real quick. If I was talking to somebody, I'd go into more detail, step by step. God can give you a new birth, a new life. He can bring, he can bring you out of this wicked world the way he brought me out of this wicked world. And I'm set apart from this world. I'm not a friend of the world. 
and it's mainly the ways of the world. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on your own understanding. When this world's falling apart, it's going to try to grab you, brother, sister, Christ, and get you to go under your own understanding and get you away from this. It's going to try to mess up your walk with the Lord. I keep trying to push this with brethren. No matter what's going on in the world, it doesn't change the mission. It doesn't change how we're supposed to live for the Lord. It might get a little bit harder to live for the Lord. We might have to learn to go without some of the extras and the blessings that God has given us, the extra stuff. You know, the Bible tells a man in ministry, be content with food and raiment. But the instruction righteous for the body of Christ, you might go through some hard times where you've got to be content with food and raiment and live off this. Remember, this is the bread of life. We might have, it might be harder for us to live a life of Christ, but the mission doesn't change. We're to keep our eyes on that blessed hope. Don't let your own understanding, which the world keeps trying to get you to go off your own understanding, Trust the Lord with all your heart. What do we hide in our heart? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right? Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Acknowledge him. Sister in Christ, acknowledge him and say, Lord, I see the bad that's going on in my, in my life right now and I'm getting fearful. Lord, what should we do? Pray about it. And if God says, hey, you need to move out to the countryside, move out to the countryside. If it's not possible to move, then say, Lord, please watch over us, protect us, and help me to acknowledge you in my life and not acknowledge the world, not acknowledge fear of the world, not acknowledging compromise in the world. I'm, I'm not saying that Sister Christ is going to do that, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just saying don't compromise. Don't start falling into being fearful and start changing how God wants you to live. Okay? And don't start turning your back on God and starting to doubt God, saying, well, why is God allowing this to happen? Trust the Lord. Acknowledge Him in all thy ways, and He shall direct thy steps. So once again, Brother Sister Christ, the sister wrote, Hello, Philip, praying that you are well. Please, ask, please, can I ask for prayer? This week in England, there has been lots of riots and protests. There's riots and protests around the world, economic collapse going on around the world, uh, government upheavals going all over in a lot of governments around the world, and like I said, there's war rumors of wars, and and we haven't we don't have like an actual full out war yet, uh, other than what they call the UK Ukraine war, but there's rumors of wars, lots of rumors of wars. This war is going to start for, between Israel and and Iran, uh, between the U.S. and Russia and the UN and Russia, and, and so on and so forth. We're praying for those people that are actually seeing it up close, firsthand, how the world's falling apart, and we need to pray for them, brothers and Christ. Where I live feels very unsafe now. I am trying to stay off the news, to stay away from fear. I understand what you're saying. I only do like five, ten minutes again. I'm going to say five or ten minutes of news, sometimes thirty minutes a day, and i got to stop. Because it's very distracting and it's fear-mongering. It's trying to pull us away from this. Paul had no clue. I, I have to point this out. Paul had no clue what's going on in the world. All he knew is what was going around and going along, going on in the body of Christ as he's writing letters to the brethren, to the church of Ephesus, the church of um, Galatia, the church of Corinth. When he's writing letters to the churches, he knew what was going on around him. And he might, he might have heard a story about this over here, over there, but for the most part, he didn't know everything that was going on in the world. I think that's what hurts a lot of the brethren lately, because we have the technology to know everything that's going on in the world, and there's a lot of fear-mongering going on in the news media. A lot of lies and control, like controlling the narrative. But we need to spend less time in the news and more time in this. I didn't say no news. I just said less time in the news and more time in this, brother, says Christ. The fear will disappear when you get into this and you get God's promises and God's assurances. The fear will disappear. Also in prayer. I'm trying to stay off the news to, to stay away from fear, but as, I, but as I do live on the edge 
of a Muslim area, I'm a bit nervous. And yes, this is in England. As things can change very quickly, please pray that I can stay strong in this evil day and for protection for my family too. God bless Sister in Christ. Please pray for this Sister in Christ again, for her family, and pray for all the brethren that are going through hard times with everything that's going on. And I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.